the regulations are divided into parts and there's a lot of regulations and in fact the book that you might have purchased would have just particular you know regulations that pertain to pilots and airmen uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some of those so fortunately that thick book that weighs like 40 pounds not all of it is applicable to you and you have to know what parts are and what parts aren't so let's look at those parts part one is general definitions so not a very long part at all but it just gives you some of the de general definitions on things uh, for example what is nighttime you know that's a great instructor question uh, you know and it's not as you might think it is so um, just some of those things abbreviations there's a lot of abbreviations and acronyms in, in aviation and uh, there's a, a listing of those as well there part 43 I'll go through this kind of quickly but part 43 is all the maintenance requirements and regulations uh, governing you know things like repairs uh, alterations major minor repairs and alterations um, the annual inspection, the 100-hour inspection, what are those, what is conducted, who can conduct those inspections on aircraft, uh, even what is considered preventative maintenance as a private pilot or better, what can I do on my own airplane? And there's a list of things in there. Part 67 is the medical standards and that would be you know everything from first to second to third class medicals and uh, what are they looking for in terms of eyesight and various other things that they are kind of grading you on 121 uh, which I put in here but this is not usually in our in our book but it is governed this governs the air carrier operations like airlines and so they're under a completely separate that's the point uh, regulations than we are and in fact charter operations uh, are under part 135 so there's these different parts that that were under we're really under part 91 which I kinda separated there at the bottom of your screen uh, part 91 flight rules that's what we're governed by um, in light aircraft uh, part 61 is certification requirements so that's the the skinny on everything for different certificates from from private to sport recreational commercial CFIs which is flight instructors or airline transport pilots you know all of those different certificates and what it takes is listed in 61 and again 91 is the flight rules that's the operating the rules of the road so as to say someone once said 61 is is how to get your license 91 is how to lose it okay all right FAA regulations part 61 so we're gonna delve into the one the sections that you need to know the most is 61 and 91 those two that I separated at the bottom so first let's dive into 61 there's not quite as many um, uh, as much content in 61 as there will be in 91 but uh, but we do need to understand some of the things that are in 61 a lot of definitions and and certificate requirements so let's dive into that so each part is divided into guess what subparts parts is parts subpart a is there's a bunch of miscellaneous things in there uh, we'll be going through a lot of those things uh, shortly here so I'll show you that subpart B is about different types of ratings that you can acquire and add on to your certificate and then C all the way through J is the different pilot certificates for example student pilot recreational sport private commercial airline and flight instructor these would represent those corresponding um, uh, subpart sections and so uh, again you can go right to those if you're trying to research certain certificates uh, each time we talk about a rule in this session we're going to give you the rule number and so you can see at the uh, over here by my pointer that this is part 61.5 paragraph a so uh, you know if you're taking notes uh, that's great I would also recommend that you jot down um, the regulation number so that you can go back and you can reference it and look it up yourself most of the time I am going to be giving you a summarization of the rule but not verbatim so if you want to look at that uh, I'd recommend that so 615 a gives us this is subpart a the general section that we talked about and this gives us again all the different possible certificates that are issued under part 61 these are called certificates by the way 
sometimes you will slip up and we'll call them licenses or you know your private pilot license but technically it's actually not a license it's a certificate and and typically certificates are things that you work hard and you earn and licenses a lot of times are things you pay for <laughs> like a, a hunting license or a fishing license right did anybody ever check to see if you could really fish uh, no probably not anyway these are certificates now underneath uh, uh, part 61 this is the second paragraph there 61.5 B paragraph B it lists out the different types of aircraft uh, that you can be certified in from the FAA now when I say aircraft aircraft is a very large uh, category for the different types of aircraft okay uh, in other words we can break this down further into what we call category and class a category is a major type of aircraft. We can see the different categories in this listing here, airplanes, uh, rotorcraft, lighter than air, and gliders. But then within each of those categories, you can have a more specialized aircraft. So underneath an airplane, or within the airplane category, I can be further specialized to fly single engine land or multi-engine land, meaning one engine and land, meaning it's gotta be wheels and on the ground and multi-engine meaning two or more engines single engine C which is uh, a water you know float plane or a multi-engine C so those are the four classes that we could be uh, rated in and when you get your for example your private pilot certificate the one you'll get is airplane single engine land that's what your category and your class will be and if you want to get your multi-engine uh, you can uh, apply for that do go through the training process and it's another check ride and it's a class add-on though to your airplane and to your private pilot I mentioned earlier that when you get your private pilot certificate you can fly that's a that's a lot of airplanes if you think about category and class airplane single engine land you can fly any airplane with one engine and wheels okay there are a lot of airplanes like that out there by the way but there is a little bit of fine print to read here and the fine print is in 6131 it says that additional training is required for these four types of aircraft and meaning you're not able to fly these four unless you get further training now the good news is it's further training with an instructor um, a certified flight instructor and it does not involve another FAA practical test you don't have to go to the FAA you don't have to go through any kind of value. it's just the flight instructor gives you instruction and he gives a one he or she gives a one-time sign-off in your logbook specifying the training that's been given and that he finds he or she finds you competent to fly this type of aircraft so the four types of separate endorsements are a complex airplane now a complex is one that it's a very specific definition it's three things retractable landing gear that is the gear the landing gear can go up and down and a controllable pitch propeller that means that the prop or the propeller is adjustable the blade angle is movable the pilot can move that with a control inside the cockpit and change that angle of blade um, that's a constant speed or a control pitch prop and then third flaps that might surprise you a little bit but not all airplanes do have flaps but uh, it has to have flaps retractable gear and a, and a uh, controllable pitch propeller and it's considered complex now by the way it has to have all three of those if it's missing any one of those it's technically not a complex aircraft high performance is very simple it's one thing and one thing only it's an engine over 200 horsepower and by the way it has to be over okay more than 200 horsepower uh, I remember giving a lot of instruction in the Piper arrows and Piper arrows were classically a 200 horsepower engine so it was one horsepower short of me signing off their high performance um, endorsement third pressurized airplane so this means now in a in a light aircraft I can take the airplane up as high as the the ceiling will let me go as far as the aircraft's service ceiling then we can take supplemental oxygen with us that's just aviators breathing oxygen and again we'll talk more about that later but I can have those oxygen bottles and uh, use supplemental oxygen now there are aircraft that don't need that because they're pressurized just like the airline you know airplanes that you fly on when you go places 
are pressurized as well. That's how they can be up at 40,000 feet and you're breathing comfortably and snoozing in your in your in your chair. So, but a pressurized aircraft has to have a separate instruction and very specific things are laid out in 6131 that have to be taught by your flight instructor and then signed off in again your logbook. And fourth, last but not least, the tailwheel aircraft, which you see in the bottom right here demonstrated, where it's uh, it's got three wheels, but one of the wheels is in the back and it sits on its tail, uh, also called conventional uh, gear style aircraft. But the tailwheel is a different animal. If you've never flown a tailwheel, they can be a squirrely on the ground, especially with crosswinds. And so you're going to want a plenty of good instruction uh, to, to learn the, the ropes on the tailwheel. So those are four additional endorsements and training that is required.